Hi, I'm Mackenzie Fagan, and this is 112 BK. Today on the show, we're talking to the New York City Sirens, the women's motorcycle club that lures unsuspecting f boys to their deaths with the sweet rumble of their Harleys. <laughs> ride up on the bike and get off the bike, and then they said, you ride that bike as if their eyes must be lying. Yeah. And then one man's plan to cope with the L train shutdown on two wheels and 744 cc's. But what now after the shutdown has been shut down? Welcome to the show. You may have noticed some changes are afoot at 112BK. We're now broadcasting and podcasting three times a week instead of four. And we're focusing on conversations with creators, cultural critics, politicians, and interpreters of our current social landscape. We want to bring you the conversations you might hear in Brooklyn's coffee shops, bookstores, bars, and bodegas, only here in this weird little studio. We'll be talking about art, power, culture, gender, design, politics, food, race, sex, and motorcycles. That's our show today. Our guests are here to talk about motorcycles both as a symbolic vehicle for burning down the patriarchy and a practical vehicle for conquering a broken subway system. You could say that today's show is really about freedom. Stay tuned. When you think about somebody who belongs to a motorcycle club, perhaps your mind conjures the image of a white guy with a ZZ Top beard, probably named Knuckles or Ribeye, or a guy called Tiny who is definitely not Tiny. For the founding members of the Sirens, the lack of female representation within the motorcycle community was a problem that needed solving. They considered names like the Skidlets, Sister Spokes, and my personal favorite, the Menstrual Cycles, before settling on the Sirens, inspired by the Homeric mermaids who led men to their watery graves. This all-women bike club has now been on the road for more than 30 years, challenging the patriarchy, gobbling up miles, riding out in front of the New York Pride Parade, and transporting breast milk to babies in need. To tell us about their founding, their membership, and their mission, we're joined by co-founder Cheryl Stewart. Welcome to Woman 2 bk Thank you. And we also have a Sirens past president and current editor of the club's newsletter, Sandra Fleming. So happy to have you on the show. Hi. So um, maybe we could start by you telling me a little bit about how you started riding bikes. So we'll start with you, Cheryl. I started riding when I, uh, I am from New York City, and I was living in San Francisco briefly, and that's when I started riding. So I learned to ride on the hills and trolley tracks of San Francisco which was challenging, but you don't know that when you just <coughs> learn, you learn where you are. I guess, you know, if I'd learned in New York City, it would have been equally challenging in different ways. And um, uh, as soon as I got my license within a week, I was on my first cross country trip coming back home. And I, I went up and down and around, and I was almost, I was in the Yukon and down into Florida and back up into, uh, practically, uh, yeah, I crossed back up into Canada and then, I, I zigzagged all around and, and then headed up to uh, New England, but it, I, I stayed out in a, until it was just too cold, and I finally came back home to New York when I couldn't stay out another day, but it was one of the best things I ever did. I just kept riding, and I'd stop and work a little and you know, get a little more money. I was traveling for gas and groceries. I, I just camped off-road and you know, didn't spend money hardly at all. So you've been on motorcycles for a while then? Since 1981. And what about you, Sandra? Well, I started riding because I worked for a home care agency, and parking was really bad. So when I started riding, those electric bikes weren't legal. So the next option was a motorcycle, and it solved my parking problem, but then it became a passion. Like, for you, riding all over the country, it became a passion, and I became fanatical. So now i in the club. I like to do the cross-country as well. I teach motorcycling, and the sirens, both of our passions is... Our club is that it's like our social, most of our social outlet are uh, with the club, so. Yes, it is. And uh, what also is really interesting to me is that our club culture is, is really imbued with a couple of things. I mean, Sandra is such a great rider, and she's an MSF instructor. That's our guru, though. <laughs> I, I have also been an instructor at the track, and I, I love to keep my skills sharp. And it's one of the hallmarks of our club. It's part of our culture to really want to excel. 
and uh, also to do political work for motorcycle rides. I want to come back to that, but you mentioned MSF instructor. Um, what yes. is that? Well, in New York State, in order to, to ride motorcycles, you need a license. So That's good. You, get a, you have a D for driver and an M for motorcyclist on your license. So there's several schools. I work for the Motorcycle Safety School, and you take a class two days. By the, At the end of it, we give you a test that will ex, uh, waive your need to take the New York State motorcycle test. So I, I teach see. that. And Cheryl, I'm curious about when you started riding in the 80s. Were there many other women on the road, or what was the association between women and motorcycles? It was so rare to see another woman riding a motorcycle. It was so rare. It, it was, if I, if I passed another woman on the road riding a motorcycle, we'd have to stop and have a little party. It was just <laughs> so rare. You just, wow, look at that. You know, it was really extraordinary. And the fact that, you know, just out riding on your own, some of the women were who were riding would ride, you know, maybe with their husbands, but it was very rare for a woman to ride her own motorcycle. And I'm so happy that that's changed a great deal since then. It's still not common, and you still get really idiotic comments from men who aren't expecting to see. Is that yours? <laughs> is that yours is the question that you get? Well, I often get the question, you ride that bike? Well, While you're just, on the bike? Yes. They saw me <laughs> ride up on the bike and get off the bike. And then they said, you ride that bike? As if their eyes must be lying. Yes. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I also get the impression, and maybe this is erroneous, that, uh, you know, women who were parts of motorcycle clubs or who were like the old ladies of people in clubs were sort of like, um, I don't know, the window dressing or the property of. Property it, of. That You will see a patch for a club that will say property of that club. They couldn't be patched. Women can't be patched. In, in old school um, outlaw motorcycle clubs, absolutely the women aren't allowed to be full members. They I are. see. And that's what patching means is becoming a... Well, earning the logo on the back of your jacket or your leather or wherever you put it, yeah. that's called patch. There's always a pledge period for I most see. clubs. I see. So in an old school male club, you might have a male member and he would have his bike and his woman both as his property. Was that the idea? Um, it depends on the club. Okay. Some people it just says property of. That's all. You know, cool. I, I think everybody has their own ideas about it and... Um, yeah, so there was an outlaw club uh, like that was for a while that was on the block behind mine in um, Brooklyn, and um, that was was it the Filthy Mad Dogs, I think. <laughs> and and yeah, the women weren't allowed to be members, yeah. and they would get a patch called the property of. So you're the property of the Filthy Mad Dogs, which is every girl's dream, of course. Fun and neighbors, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So this was sort of the climate um, in which you learned how to ride. Yeah. And what were some of the founding guiding principles when you came together to form the Sirens? Safety? Yes. Um, safety because I think from the first year, we did require that you have uh, taken an MSF class. And so those of us who had never taken one, we all went and took it together. And um, that was revelatory. You know, you just don't even know that you're not riding well until you find out the things that you've done wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so definitely safety and um, safety and sisterhood. Sandra, how did you find the sirens? You know, I wanted people to ride with because I, wanted to find out more about motorcycling, which I love the sirens for because I had Cheryl. She's, I would come to you like, how do I handle these potholes and not staring at the ground and how to make these turns? And You did? Yeah, I did. I came to you for that. <laughs> I, would, I would ask all these little questions. Can't but you, you, you have questions. You have questions about gear, about how to maintain your bike. We have a, a oil change day. We have so many women in our club who wrench their bikes. Um, you want to know where the good roads are, you know. So to find a social organization to learn more, I mean, they've been leading the pride since 87. So you I, knew I, they were up there, but I... 86. 86. It's 86. 86. It is. It's 86. Because we formed in 86 and then immediately led... The, the, right, right. So they yeah. formed in 86. So I knew they were in the front, but I played in the Big Apple course. I was always in the band. But so I never even saw you guys... <laughs> up there but I knew it existed so and it was interesting to find out 
They are not called dykes on bikes. Yes. Everybody calls it dykes on bikes. I was confused about this as well. Yeah, that's, that's a separate San Francisco. Yeah, okay, that's, that's not here. Well, in and fact, it, uh, dykes on bikes could be um, uh, adjective. But it's not a proper <laughs> noun for right, us. Right, right, right. It's not the name of the Understood. club, right? Yeah. So in San Francisco, the whole contingent that leads the San Francisco Pride March is called Dykes on Bikes. And then they made their own club called Dykes on Bikes, which I they see. had to go through years of copyright fights about because the copyright people in Washington thought that it was offensive. And now they have chapters in other places as well, including we have a member from Iceland who's in Iceland, the entire country as is one chapter of Dykes on Bikes. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Dyke on Bike. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. She, she, there are other members, uh, but the entire <laughs> country is the, the uh, territory of amazing. one chapter of Dykes on Bikes. That's funny. <laughs> yeah. Well, I definitely learned something, that it's actually the sirens, the sirens yeah. uh, not proper noun Dykes on Bikes who who. Yeah. Right out in front of the pride yeah. parade. Right, so we are the leaders, and then we invite all of any other motorcyclist who wants to join us, so we organize the contingent, so it's a much larger contingent than just our club. And it's going to be really big this year. That's right, so it's the yeah. 50th anniversary of Stonewall. Are you guys planning anything Oh, not special? only that, it's World Pride. World Pride, it's right. It's World mm -hmm. Pride, so our ranks are going to swell. So if somebody wants to ride this year, they need to, it's, don't register yet. We haven't opened registration yet because Pride is still being organized. There's a lot. But we're looking for sponsors because we want to have a big motorcycle event. So if anybody's interested in sponsoring us, can I give our email? Please do, so yes. So it's sirens.mc.nyc at gmail. Uh, there's some big men's clubs that participate, but anyone who rides a motorcycle or a scooter is welcome to come out and enjoy Pride with us. Show your pride for World Pride and let's make a huge showing. Yeah, we, we've had some straight supporters join us. Oh, of course. Anybody. Sure. Anyone. Allies, welcome. Uh -huh. Anyone. Well, to seeing you guys. Scooters and motorcycles. Yes. Yeah, that's yes. great. I'm looking Allies. forward to seeing you guys ride out this year. <laughs> yeah. um, tell me a little bit about what you ride and maybe about the significance that your bike holds in your life. Sure. Oh. Sandra? Oh, Sandra. okay. Well, well yeah. mm -hmm. I since I my job, I use it every day. Uh, when it's above 50, I'm kind of a punk because I use <laughs> it for work. Um, I ride every day. It's above 50 because I go house to house serving patients. So I ride, when I do long trips, I ride a Yamaha FJ09, which is a nice big sport tourer. And then for around town, I have a FZ07 for fun, quickie, in and out. So, do you do you name your bike? Is that blue a and red? Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> oh, that's blue and red. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I, I don't have names for my bikes now. In the past, I have, but mm, my bikes aren't named right now. They're just special enough, exactly the way they are. Um, my regular street ride is. Um, I'm, I'm also on a Yamaha for the street. I have a um, an FC1, a 2009 FC1, and that's a great big heavy street bike and um, it's a commuter for me as well because I'm a freelance artist and I need to put my tools on a vehicle and get somewhere that's definitely not very accessible and where I live is is there aren't many public transportation options either in Red Hook so I my motorcycle is definitely a commuter vehicle as well as my joy and my passion and then I also have a bike for the track I love to do track days and uh, I saved two years for the bike of my dreams, a BMW S1000RR, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and it <clears throat> makes me so happy. Um, the rewards are tremendous. I have to say, um, my reaction time, I, at 56 years old, my reaction time has gotten sharper. It gets better and better as I ride. If you're riding at speed or in traffic in New York City, you'd better have good reaction time or something bad might happen. And let me tell you, that that's a really good incentive to keep yourself sharp. Um, my, I'm fit. I'm happy. Uh, when other people are on the road and, you know, you're sitting in traffic in a car and, and, and your lane moves and... Yeah, I passed the van. I get that feeling all day, every day in traffic on a motorcycle. <laughs> And uh, it's a fuel-efficient, congestion-reducing mm. vehicle. This is a really great vehicle for New York City traffic. And so I have an advantage of getting everywhere I want to get to faster and happier. 
And, and Cheryl, you also um, lost a partner in I a did. motorcycle accident, and you yourself were in a, a, a bad accident as I, well. Yes, I've, I've been in one very serious accident and, and a few others that well, I thought they were serious at the time, but what did I know? Everything's compared relative, to, I Compared suppose. to my big accident. Um, yeah, so yes, bad things can happen. Um, bad things can happen waiting for the bus. Um, bad things can happen in a car. Bad things can happen anywhere, anytime. So I say, enjoy your life and do the thing that you love. So yes, I did lose my partner. Um, she was, uh, she had the right of way. Um, the uh, truck driver had a stop sign and um, he blew the sign, that's all, and she died. Um, she was very happy. <laughs> she was doing what she loved. And I know you spoke about how um, her death for many club members was an inflection point, um, that some yes. people did give up writing. Yes. Um, that there was a lot of, I guess, soul searching about what writing meant to people. Um, and as you've as you've just stated about you know how it's something that brings you great joy. It never crossed my mind to stop writing after Sharon died, and um, then I found out that for others that was the thing that made them say, "Yeah, no, forget it. It's not. I'm not writing." And uh, I was surprised because I didn't connect those two things in my own mind. Um, this is what I do. This is what I love. Um, I, I, my life is so fabulous now. I have the best life. I love my life. Um, but when I was younger, I, my life was really sucky. And um, honestly, mm. I, I, I normally, I don't say this very often. I'll just say it right now. I'm just, I'll just say it in front of everybody. Um, if I didn't ride, if I didn't have that joy, if I didn't have this thing that I found that makes me so happy, I probably wouldn't be here now. Honestly, I really wouldn't. So um, yeah, I'm here because I ride. Mm. It's amazing that you guys um, have both found something that you're passionate about and have created community around this shared mm -hmm. interest of amazing, amazing women. Um, you know, I, I happened to find myself at Babes Ride Out in oh, um, yeah. Joshua Tree earlier yeah. this year, cool. quite by accident. Wow. Um, and it was, and my girlfriend rides, and it was just amazing for us to be there and see all of this diverse group of women. Um, and I imagine, you know, since the 80s, you know, you sort of pioneered, we're pioneers in, in you know, um, in, in female motorcycle clubs. And now there were all of these women who are riding together and some of them had like cute matching outfits. Oh and yeah, now there's more gear. It was <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'm also wondering, you know, there were many different genres of women, I guess, who were there. And I'm wondering, mm -hmm. as the community has grown, um, Sandra, have you found that it's become uh, fractitious at all, or is it still a very tight community of women who ride? You know what? I think it, it splinters some by age and some by bike, but when you have these big, it, it's still kind of new. You know, I don't think it's big enough to splinter in the way you might think it, mm. it would. Um, I went to Babes right out. I fell a little low. <laughs> A little low, but <laughs> some of some of my some of the uh, club members go every year. They love it. They absolutely love it, and they go out west. And they, there's a bays right out east coast, mm -hmm. you know. So I think at this point in our club, we're kind of all just bikers. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. there there are times when you will see people separate by bike type, by age, by ethnicity. There's a big black community of riders. Yeah. There's a organization I am um, affiliated with called uh, Black Girls Ride. So we're going down in New Orleans, but anybody can go. My, when are you going? The, we're going in July, taking a group of July ladies down. July in New Orleans. Yeah, well that's when the Essence, <laughs> we're riding down to the Essence Fest. Oh, that sounds So cool. Linda and I are going, so Linda's white, she's going. But so it's, it's sometimes they'll splinter by race and sometimes it'll be by age, but really with the sirens, we're everybody. We're really, really a multicultural, multi-age, multi-demographic group. So, no, we That's don't amazing. pretty much. I think everybody feels comfortable no matter what community you come from. You guys are not only cool as hell, you're doing amazing work. <laughs> um, and I also just want to mention that our producer here, Shreem Bargi and Martine Granby, have a documentary that they're working on about the sirens. So um, if people want to learn more, they can stay tuned for that. And thank you so, so much for coming on the Thanks show. For Thanks Sandra. for having us. Thanks for having us. See you at World Pride. World Pride, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. See you in June. Yay. <laughs>